welcome back to Linda's Pantry. So today it's still raining outside. We've got flooding going on and it's just really dark and gray out. It's uh, about uh, 9.45 in the morning and it's really dreary outside. So I'm gonna put a pot of soup on. I, kept, I did some uh, ground turkey from some whole turkeys I got on sale for 45 cents a pound. I saved the neck and all the giblets out of it and a couple of the wings and I'm gonna make a soup. And so I'm gonna make turkey soup, but I'm gonna put an Italian twist on it. I'm gonna add some, because there's not much meat on all that. I'm gonna add some chicken sausage to this. This is a sweet Italian chicken sausage. And so we're just gonna chop and drop and make this delicious. I'm gonna take it to work tomorrow and have it in the slow cooker on the, it's got its own little plate to warm on in the break room and then whoever's hungry can go help themselves. So. I hope it inspires you to stay along and I'll show you how I make this. I'm gonna use uh, some dumplings that I bought in the frozen section and uh, see how those come out. Instead of making homemade, we just had kind of a homemade dumpling thing the other day. So I'm gonna change it up a little bit and uh, I'll show you what I do with the rest of it. Now, that being said, I'm gonna leave some links in the description box below. I hope you go over and visit my Wild Tree website. Check out their all natural, all organic products that they have. They really have a great line of food products and spices and they're super healthy. And some really easy put together recipes. So you can check out the recipes on my website as well. And so now I'd like you to go over to my Facebook page and hit that like button, see who I'm watching, see whose videos I'm sharing. And um, anyway, as always guys, I hope it brings you back. And if you like this somewhere along the way, give me a thumbs up. All right, come on, let's go make some soup. Okay, so I thought I'd give you a glimpse of what it's doing out here. It is pouring and no sign of, you can't see any of the houses back there, hardly. And you can see how wet the ground is. It's really saturated. Um, we aren't used to this. We live in a desert. Anyways, uh, the river is flooding in a couple of areas and yeah, it's pretty crazy. So I'm not thankfully in a flood zone, but I was gonna go into Costco and uh, I, don't, I don't wanna leave now. I just wanna make soup. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stay in and stay warm. All right, guys. <laughs> I'll bring you over this to this. This is going to simmer for a few hours, and um, and then once I take all the meat off the bone, then I can add the other ingredients, so we don't use up all their nutrients by boiling them to death. So there we go. It already smells good. I think I will add my bay leaf though, and <clears throat> and some rosemary. And So I'm going to put a couple bay leaves down in here to let those, those will come out before I serve. And get some rosemary. I've got some um, whole rosemary. I'm probably going to use the um, Italian seasoning from Wild Tree. This is a wonderful blend. Um, let's see what's in it. It's uh, mirror. Miracua powder, um, salt, sugar, corn oil, carrot, celery, spices, red wine, oregano, garlic, parsley, and baking soda. Odd, but that's about a tablespoon. We're gonna go ahead and put that down in there. It's really delicious. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend going over to my website and trying it. I like to add the rosemary in as well. So just about a half a teaspoon, and this is dried rosemary, so I just kind of break it up in my hand. It's just gonna perfume the soup and give it more of an Italian flavor and flair. It's gonna be delicious. Mm -hmm. We better have more garlic, though. I better add some fresh garlic. So I'll be back when I start I'm going to roast some butternut squash to go in this soup. But I'm also, the reason I'm roasting it instead of just throwing it in at the end, which I will be throwing it in at the end, but I'm roasting it because a small portion of it is going to go into my turkey pot pie. So that being said, I've got my um, butter flavored uh, natural grapeseed oil that 
This is what I use on this. You could use olive oil if you did not have this. You could use plain grapeseed oil. You can get that just about anywhere. Um, it doesn't have to be from Wild Tree, but that's the product line I happen to use. So, we're also going to put down a healthy amount of my homemade garlic powder. And we're just really going to toss this once we get... Um, I don't think you can get too much garlic. It's okay, don't be scared. It's supposed to keep us healthy. Although it kind of let me down, I had, a, I had a head cold here. So, now cracked black pepper. And a good amount of that. And some pink salt. And then we're just going to get in here with a couple of forks and toss this. I'm going to put this in a 400 degree oven and let it roast and caramelize and all the sugars will develop in the squash. This is such a great squash. Um, I've saved the other half of this squash. I'm going to make some butternut squash soup with it for later in the week. I'm a, I'm a soup girl if you guys haven't figured that one out. I love soup. So I just try to get an even layer down and then I'll, I still want some more pepper on here. My pepper grinder has been giving me fits. I might need a new one. It should not be that hard. <laughs> okay. So it should be ready to go in the oven, and then uh, I'll bring you back when I'm a little bit further along with what I'm doing, having a cup of coffee here. The rain is trying to stop for us, so um, I might actually get to Costco after all while this uh, is simmering after I get these roasted off. So it usually takes about 20 minutes for this to roast. I want it shy of being really done because it's going to continue to cook in both dishes, so... All right, guys. Okay, guys, so I've cooked this turkey for about four hours, and I just boned everything. I'm going to put that back in the pot. The broth is absolutely delicious. So, get that done. And now what I want to do is I want to open up the sausage. And what I like to do is take the casing off because that can be kind of an odd texture in your mouth. You may not like that. So, let me grab another glove here. And we'll get this moving. So, it was really fun having that contest drawing. I want to do it again here really soon. So, um, We'll get moving on that, and I'll figure everything out, what I'm going to ask for. And what I'm going to do with this, because I'm not going to brown these, so I'm just going to make mini meatballs out of this sausage. And this is the chicken sausage. It's really low fat, and it'll just be delicious in this, and it'll bring the Italian seasoning home as well. Just little bite-sized meatballs. Don't need anything big. And how easy is this to uh, drop those down? And they'll cook until tender. And that's how easy that is. I guess it helps if the knife is pointing the sharp side up. <laughs> It always helps if you have the sharp side working in your favor. So, okay. So once again, just roll them up. There you go. And roll them up. And roll it up. 
So I'm going to roll up the rest of these, drop them down. I'll take you over to the other cook station and drop these down in the pan and let them simmer with the, the rest of the turkey. And this should give us a fair amount of meatballs. I do have some turkey Italian sausage as well if I need it, but I think there's plenty of meat going on here. So um, i take this glove off so I can turn you off and I'll bring you over and show you what I got going on. You can't even see the meatballs. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so we will uh, get busy. All right, so now I'm going to drop these little meatballs down here. Just take a spoon and grab them up. They're about a nice little bite full. This will just add some extra protein to this soup, some more Italian flavor. And I'm probably going to add, because this stock is really concentrated on me, I'll probably be adding some more water. But we'll see after I get my veg in here. And mm, this is gonna be good. Our rain finally stopped, and I was able to run out to the store because it was just coming down in sheets. And our flood warning has been canceled, so we're all safe, which is good. Don't need any of that. Last time we flooded here, it was, a, it was a pretty big mess. Our downtown kind of flooded. So, that being said, here we go. We'll get this going here. And look how nice. And if they stick together a little bit, it's no big deal. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's soup. It's not, you know, a science project. So you can see I'm already starting to cook. And it'll just make them nice and tender. And You could brown those if you wanted. I just didn't think it was that necessary. So I've got my butternut squash roasting in the oven, and I'm going to get my other vegetables out in this pot as well. I've got a miracle of celery, carrots, and onions that I've diced up. And I want, if you wanted them strictly to flavor the broth, then you would put them in in the beginning. But if you want them to be part of the soup and the vegetable in the soup, to eat and have it worth eating, um, you want to put it in towards the end of the soup uh, just so it can become part of the soup and not lose all its nutrient content. So, mm, doesn't that look good already? This is going to be good. And I'm not done. I've got some, I've got some uh, butternut squash that's going to go in there and some kale. So, and then we've got to put in our frozen dumplings. So it's going to be Probably. chock full of good. Oh, a fourth of a bundle. It's really not. It was something that I had left. So I want to make sure I use it up. Kale is one of those superfoods. It's so good for you. You could put spinach in here, but the kale holds up better to the longer cooking time and holds its texture well. So that would be, um, let's see, let me grab this. We're just going to put that, and that's going to melt down in there. Look at this big pot of soup. I need a bigger pot, you guys. Ooh, look at those meatballs. They look good. Okay, now I'll get a spatula to get out my butternut squash. And this pan is still hot. Now remember, I did this shy of al dente. It's really not completely done, but it has started, you can see, it started to caramelize, and um, the sugars are developed, and so we just want to put some in for some added texture and flavor. We don't need the whole plate because we have to make room for the dumplings, and I'm not making dumplings today. I saw this a while back on YouTube, and I had never seen them before, and then um, I thought, well, if I ever see them in the grocery store, I'll pick them up. And so here we are. And I'm going to add some more water. Um, this broth is absolutely delicious. I did cheat and taste it. I'm going to add another pint of water. 
because I need some for those dumplings to cook in. And let me open this package. I'll show you the package. It's, um, you get it in the freezer section. And I had really, honestly, I'd never even paid attention. I've always just made my own or used pasta. But it's uh, Mrs. B or Mary B's um, dumplings. And these are, it says open kettle. It, there's a pound and a half. Um, it says it makes 16 servings. And it's got directions on how to make chicken and dumplings on the back, which is pretty fun. You know, it's just the basic chicken and dumplings, nothing else. But for a beginner cook, what a great idea. And for someone like me today, I'm busy cleaning and trying to get ready for my work week. I don't get uh, two days off this week, so I truly need to um, be on top of my game. And so they come in strips, um, and it says to break them up into thirds or how, however you like. So... And then to cook for an additional 45 minutes. These have kind of stuck together, so I'm going to have to take a paring knife and get them separated. But I'm going to put those dumplings down and finish cooking this off. And I'll bring you back when we're a little closer to done. Doesn't that look delicious? Mmm, you guys. It smells heavenly in here. Little Italian. Don't want to get too close or steam up the camera. A little Italian uh, flair to it, and chock full of healthy vegetables, beautiful color, the turkey, and we didn't waste a thing off those two turkeys that I took in um, 45 cents a pound, ground them up, saved the, the Okay, parts so for... here we go. This is done, and look how thick that broth got by having that uh, the dumplings in there. It's set to cook them for 40, for 40 or 45 minutes, but, and I thought, well, why? Pasta doesn't take that long, but it just thickened this broth beautifully. I can't wait to have a bowl, you guys. So it's all done. The veggies are done. Everything's lent its flavor, and it's just going to be a great, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. I might, I might call it turkey and dumplings, I, I wish I had some more kale in there. That's my only, but a little bit's better than nothing. So the the pasta stays, you know, pretty thin. It doesn't get thick, you know, thick or fat. And really, all it was, I can read you the ingredients. The ingredients on this, <clears throat> and I I always read ingredients before I buy it because I don't want to be eating something I'm not sure what's in it. Um, it does contain wheat, so if you are allergic to wheat or have a intolerance to that, you shouldn't use these. But it's flour, water, and palm oil. So I thought, well, there you go. And it's manufactured by Homemade Foods, Inc. in Florida. So, and they have a website. You can go to their website. But this has reduced a little bit as well. Um, and it's going to be delicious. I have a warming plate for this, and I'm just going to take it to work tomorrow and share it with everyone, and hopefully somebody will get a warm bowl of this and um, enjoy it. So I'm going to bring you over and show you what I have because it looks and smells amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have this all ready, and I'm just going to dish some up. In fact, I'm going to get a smaller ramekin. I'm, I'm not extremely hungry, but I, I do want to taste this for you. Um, it's got recapping, it's got the turkey that I cooked down, and I'm uh, kind of bummed I lost the footage of my ground turkey and um, pot pie video. I, my computer this morning when I got up, um, it had a whole different format going on. I had to reboot to an earlier date and it deleted that so that's kind of a drag but anyway it is what it is so now I've got this beautiful little bit of soup here and we'll call that turkey and dumplings because they said it's dumplings and um mmm give a taste of that that's going to be a heartwarming soup on a rainy day let's give you a close up here 
because it's still pretty lava hot. <laughs> I don't want it too close or it'll blur up on me. I'm kind of shopping for a new camera if anybody has any suggestions on a video camera. I don't have a... Okay, so getting back to this though, I'm going to do some more cracked black pepper because I love that on top. You could do some Parmesan cheese because of the Italian flair. Um, I just really like the cracked pepper. I don't, I don't know why, but doesn't that look good? I'm going to make sure I get one of these dumplings, or what they're calling dumplings. They look like noodles. A little bit of a meatball. About a half. Let's cut it in half. They're all tender. Some turkey, carrot. Let's get a little bit of everything in there if I can. <laughs> That's a huge bite. But how delicious is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I'm excited. And this broth is really thickened up nice. I mean, I'm really excited to share this with my coworkers. Okay. Here we go. Going in. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so delicious. This is exactly what the doctor ordered. Wow. That is so warm and comforting and ah, oh, it's going to be the perfect dinner. It's really delicious, you guys. I hope that it inspires you to make something like this. Just to, you know what? This was stuff I already had in the fridge that I needed to use, and um, it's it's not anything special except that uh, I created it from what I had, and um, now I've got this big pot of soup to share, and it's delicious. I hope it inspires you to think outside the box, uh, create something for yourself. It doesn't have to be an exact recipe. It doesn't have to be, well, I don't have that brand of carrots. It can be whatever you have in your pantry and in your um, extended pantry to service your family and to make a delicious dish. So truly, I hope it brings you back next time. I hope that if you like this, you give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, go share it on your Facebook page and let somebody else in on this because this is a quick and easy well, it wasn't quick. It took all day, but it simmered on its own. I didn't have to do anything. And those dumpling noodles are really tasty. They're in a pinch. It, you know, I didn't have to roll out any dough. Um, so, you know, it'd be nice to have a package of those in the freezer just to have on hand. And um, I utilized all the turkey that uh, came off of the two turkeys that I... Um, made ground turkey with for 45 cents a pound so I didn't waste anything so sorry I lost that footage but as always guys I'll see you next time and God bless